Okay. Testing. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Hello, peeps from Instagram. And any new subscribers that I have here at YouTube. Well, what is going on? Here's the deal. On June 2nd, I had a total knee replacement on my left knee. And on July 17th, I'm supposed to have a total knee replacement on my, did I say left or right? I did the left first <laughs> and I'm doing the right in July. So one of the things I've been thinking about a lot is, does art help you heal? And the only thing that has been helping me through this process to keep my mind off of the pain is when I managed to get in here to my art table and try to just see what can I do? Can I make a tag? Can I make a page for a journal? Can I do a little collaging? Am I able to stitch? Since it's my left foot, I mean my left knee, I use my right foot for stitching so I can use my sewing machine. And then when I have the right one done, I would be using my hand crank sewing machine. So these are the things that I can do. I can only sit for 30 minutes and then I have to get up. That's the doctor's orders and the PT's orders. You know, 30 minutes, get up, walk around, etc. So I decided, well, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to turn on the video and I'm just going to see what I can get done. It's going to be unscripted. It's going to be my messy table. It's going to be me just seeing what I can do and using this process to help me get through this summer because this is the summer of surgery. <laughs> and uh, if, I don't, if I don't get out of the recliner, <laughs> which we call the rehab recliner, if I don't get out of that recliner and do something to get my mind off of my knee, I'm uh, just going crazy. So today I started thinking, well, what is on the table that I can just play with? And so I had these tags that I picked up at Michael's and I, you know, what is the deal about tags? That's what I want to know. I mean, when I first started making the journals, I was like, what is this thing about tags? What are they? What do you do with them? They're like little mini collages, little mini pieces of art, but what's the function? And I Googled and I Googled and I, I couldn't find anything. I was just like, I'm at a loss. But then I thought, well, basically they can be whatever you want them to be. And, but I would think you would like to leave, if you decorate the front, you would like to leave the back to where the person that hopefully purchases your journal, if you're selling it, could have a place to write. And so it has not only, you know, it has form and function. You can make it beautiful, but it could still work. So that's what I've been trying to do. So I have this very interesting material that I found at a flea market, thrift store type deal, a long time ago. And it was like this whole roll for like 10 cents, but it had aged to this beautiful color and I was like what is this stuff so I started playing around with it and then I asked some people on Instagram what is it what is it and they said someone came in and there was a lot of ideas but someone came in and said they think it's the stuff that they use on upholstery skirts and it's called a skirt stiffener and so I googled it and really that's what it is but when you look at the new stuff it's always white because it hasn't aged now this stuff is very interesting. It has kind of a translucency, but you can rip it really straight. It's really cool stuff. So I've been experimenting with what you can do. Now today I traced this tag on, and the only thing is when you do that, it comes off kind of curled. So what I did then was I took it and I put Liquitex matte medium uh, on the front and on the back of the card. And then I took my heat gun and I dried it. So I laid it down on this and I dried it with the heat gun and it was curled, but then as the heat gun started penetrating the fibers, it started to flatten out. Now I was told you can't iron it. So at one point I took, this is parchment paper, and I put it between 
the parchment paper and pressed it and it was okay. So you can do that, but you don't want to put an iron directly on this stuff is what I've been told. So I made this little tag. Then I thought, well, can you, but what's the point? It's got this great texture. There's translucency. It feels great. It's interesting, but can you write on it? So then I took a scrap and I used pencil. Can you write on this stuff? Yes, you can. It works. There it is. And then I used Sharpie in ink. And now I think it's really, it also helped that I had the matte medium on there because it took the pencil. It didn't, it doesn't smear very much and it took the ink without smearing. So the matte medium really helped out with that. So if you made cards, tags out of this, and you wanted the back to be something that someone could write on, it would work. So it's a, it's an experiment. All right, so that's what I'm working on. And then I've got these little mixed media collages that I've been playing with here today, seeing how they might work. First I had, I was like, okay, so let's just put it on, on the card that I purchased. And I'm like, oh, not bad, not bad. So I'm playing around with that. Now, what do I have going on here? Well, this fabric <laughs> is interesting. This is a jacquard fabric. It's a hand-woven jacquard that I wove in grad school the year 2000. <laughs> and I have little bits of it left. Um, here's the back, and you can see where I did some free motion stitching. And I had mounted a metallic fabric on top I had done the stitching. The metallic fabric has a fringe that came out rust, so I pulled that out, which I really like. Then I have some coffee dyed, tea dyed, some rust dyed fabric, and this is a little piece of digital fabric that printed out. So I put this little collage together, and I was like, hey, that's not bad. And it's allowing me to use these little remnants of precious hand-woven jacquard fabric that I had woven in school. So that's what's going on with this one. Same thing happening here. We've got all the same fabrics, except there's no digital fabric on this. And then there's a little bit of Japanese calligraphy from one of my favorite books. And so I really like these. So I thought they would work great on a tag. And then, you know, maybe use some of this beautiful linen, maybe some hand stitching, then, you know, maybe some, some of that in the little whole area. So that's what I've managed to do so far <laughs> today with my little 30 minute experiment. What can I do at the table? And then also some other little quick things that I've been playing with are paper clip covers because it's something I can sit down and do in a short period of time when I'm feeling like, oh, I, I don't even think I can sit here for 30 minutes. I can maybe sit for 15. So, you know, these just slide on. You can use them as tags in your journal. You can do all kinds of stuff with these. And I've done some experiments with them and this is a digital paper that I made, I printed out. But I've also been playing around with fabric. You can spray starch the fabric and make them. Um, you can, you know, the sky's the limit. So I'm gonna do a video on how I make these. And I know there's lots of videos out there about making these little guys different covered paperclip, you know, in different ways, but I'm going to show you how I figured out how I did it that I felt was really super easy. So I'm going to do that probably tomorrow, see how I'm feeling. Um, but I just wanted to pop in here, talk a little bit about what's going on and see what I can start sharing at my work table during this whole process this summer of rehabbing, recovering from two knee replacement surgeries. I have a whole stack of journals that I've been working on. A lot of them with the pages, you know, the signatures ready to get sewn into the journal. But if you're like me, you wanna be at your best. You wanna be fresh when you go to sew those signatures in. You have worked on those pages. You've made digitals, you've collaged, you've just put your heart and soul into it and you, you know, for me, I'm just like, I cannot punch. What if I punch the hole in the wrong place because I'm not feeling 100%. So I've stacked those guys up. 
they're waiting for when I feel better because they're supposed to be going in the shop. So in the meantime, I thought, well, what am I going to do? Well, I can make a lot of pages. I can do some experimenting and just end up with a nice stack of stuff to go in the journals. And yesterday, while I'm at it, I found, I was making this pocket out of an envelope that I tea dyed and then I stained it with some ink and I was digging through my stash and I found this little guy. It's a block print that I did. I don't even, you know, I was experimenting one day and I carved this block print. I printed out some of these on linen, tossed them aside, was doing something else and they kind of got lost. And then now I'm digging through all these buckets trying to find stuff that I can work with because I can't really stand up you know, at my art table and do block printing right now. So I'm like, just looking, what can I, what can I find? So I found this little guy. And so I'm thinking I'm going to maybe do a little stitching, maybe some collage work and put that on a pocket. I could also just, when I put it on, just have it here and here. So this is open. So it becomes a tuck spot on the pocket, which I've been doing lately. And with that, I've got some of those over here. Here's one that I just did. Okay, so this is kind of fun. I really like this. I just kind of came up with this. So I've got a tuck spot here. This is an acetate. And then there's a tuck spot there. This is painted canvas. And this is, there's a shibori book that I have and has all these beautiful patterns for shibori. And I took a black and white image, you know, scanned it, put it in the printer, and printed it out on the clear acetate. And so you have this translucency, and I turned that into a pocket. And then a tuck spot here. This is a printout of a rusty building in Savannah, Georgia, where I was at for grad school. So I still have some of that photography. I have that in here. And then I just put some linen dyed fabric. And so now I left the bottom open so you can slide this through like that for a nice tuck spot and then I haven't decorated this sometimes I do sometimes I don't that guy slides in there and then there's also a tuck spot here so I've been playing around with the acetate that was something I did the other day when I was like I can't take it anymore and my leg was killing me but I, when I came in here and I started working suddenly I'm forgetting about my knee and I'm feeling so much better and I'm like wow art really does heal and that's where I'm at right now my whole mindset is about that because what would I do without it how would I get through this without it how would I get through this summer of having two major knee surgeries without being able to create and, it, and if you're out there and you're listening to this and you're having the same kind of issues or you've got some other type of surgery, I'm telling you, if you can get creative, even it's the simplest things that you can do, it will, you will get on the right side of your brain. You will stop thinking about the pain in your knee, your back, your shoulder, your hip, whatever you're going through. I highly recommend it. I, I'm, I've always been a believer that it heals, but I'm telling you right now with this, I'm really a believer because the only relief that I have gotten over the last few days, this see, it's, uh, the surgery was June 2nd, has been, so this is day 12, has been when I'm at my table creating. So while I got this in my hand, we could look at a few little things that's in here. This is gonna be, this is a signature that's gonna go in a journal. Let's see what we can see here. This table is out of control. This is uh, unedited, <laughs> unscripted. This is the real deal of what's happening in my life right now. You know, <laughs> no beautiful setup scenes. This is the real deal <laughs> at the table. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, <laughs> get it into view here. Okay, all right, let's see what we got here. This is a digital that I created and I just made a little tuck spot here. This is a signature that I've been working on since this, you know, the surgery. So um, another digital, a pocket. And this is really <laughs> interesting because I felt like 
this is kind of all about me right now because I'm in my whole, you know, I got to get over this. This is, this is about D. <laughs> and so this is a picture of me when I was a teenager that I've put into a digital pack that I did. And I was like, I'm going to print that out and use it because I'm feeling it right now. You know, so that's me when I was 16 years old. Of course, I don't look like that now. <laughs> okay, here's some watercolor digital paper that I created. And this is photography from Green Lane Park, my favorite park. Make a little tuck spot there. This is dyed paper that I recently did with using RIT dyes. It seemed to work pretty good. Another pocket. This opens up. More of that Savannah um, photography from those beautiful rusty buildings. My, one of my favorite books, some ephem ephemera. This is photography from an old barn here in Pennsylvania where I live that I shot and I turned it into a pocket. And then this pocket's just from an envelope. Ooh, I gotta get that in there. There we go. Some ribbon, more of that same barn. A little tea dye. Another book that I love, uh, more of my digital paper, this little painting I did on digital paper, put that up, Let's see what else we got here. More of the digital paper, made it into a little tuck spot with these little cards. This is a trick. You know, I had some business cards, the paper that you get that you print out business cards and they're, they're not, you know, it's not the best quality, but they were temporary before I got my professional ones printed up. And so I had these sheets and I'm like, what am I going to do with those? So I would just play around with it, print it. And I printed stuff out on them, just run it, run a digital through and just treat it like a sheet of paper. But then when it's perforated and you take it apart and you get these cards and then you can paint over them, you can do whatever you want. And then I was kind of hooked. I was like, boy, that's the, that's the, the easy cheaters way to get, <laughs> you don't have to cut anything. It's just perforated. So I ended up buying another pack. And so, but I only, you know, try to get them when they're on sale because they're really not that cheap. Okay. But a fun thing to play with. You just run it through your printer and then you take them apart and then you've got all these nice little cards to play with. Yeah. Here's another one. See? It's the size of a business card. Another pocket, another one of those cards. I really like that. That size works well. I can't get this in there. I'm struggling. Open that up a little bit. Some more digital paper. Double the printed on both sides that I created. Another pocket. What else did I have in here? More digital paper. I still think I want to come in here and add more texture. Some little remnants of wovens, some little, you know. Oh, this was fun. It's like a, a little, you got one, two, three, three tuck spots. And then this here becomes a pocket. So I put a little ribbon on there so you'd see that that opens up as a pocket. More of that writ dyed paper. Watercolor that I did that I photographed and turned into a paper and another one of those little translucent little tuck spot things I made the other day with the um, acetate printout. Kind of like that that the, the, the bottom is open because you could just go like that you know seems like they're easier to deal with and this is a piece at the end is cotty paper so that's all I managed to get done on that one since the surgery, I, I usually have a lot more, I have remnants of hand wovens, little tiny pieces of tapestry, because if you know me, you know I'm a tapestry weaver as well. So I think I'm going to come in here and jazz this guy up a little bit. Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. I hope you come along with me on my journey, journey of recovery this summer and see what I can do while I'm recovering from these surgeries and let's make some art journal pages together. Let's create, let's have a good time and let's, let's see just how far art can help me get through this because once I get this one rehabbed, I gotta go do it again. 
and boy oh boy just the thought of that because now I know what it takes now I know what it is before it was like ignorance is bliss really well now I know the harsh reality of it so I'm gonna really really need to rely on my art to help me get through this thanks for stopping by and as always if you if you feel like it if you're into this you know hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notified because I'm going to be doing this this summer and I would really love to connect with some other people that may be going through the same thing as me. Well, all right. Bye-bye.